Hi, it's Rob from the Bobs here, and yes, we've got a video today. Okay, so I will be definitely filming in two weeks' time, but sometimes you come across a book, or two weeks' time because uh, it's the booker. Anyway, that's on August 1st. Anyway, but sometimes you come across a book that strikes you and you just have to talk about it. And this book is Solenoid. Now, there have been other videos about this book and probably much better ones, I can tell you that. You've got the Waste Mailing List one, you've got Leaf by Leaf, Eric Carl Anderson. So, but anyway, it's, it's not to compete. Here are my views. Okay, so as always, this is unplanned. It's off the top of my head. It's sort of scripted because I did write a review of it on my blog. But anyway, I had to talk about it. So Solenoid is by Marcia Carterescu, Rescu, and it's translated by Sean Cotter. How can you describe this book? It's a little bit difficult because it's an everything novel. That means it squeezes a lot of things. But if you want a basic plot, it's about an elementary school teacher who's a failed writer but he jots his observations and philosophies in notebooks and he's sharing these notebooks with us that's what solenoid is a collection of notebooks there are actually four because it's divided in four parts now i will not say each notebook is thematically different or not but it adds to the structure of the book obviously and you'll see why So this novelist is a failed writer, and see, the thing is, again, if you watch the videos I mentioned, they're going to give you the background. When Carteresco was young, he read a poem called The Fall, and he was instantly lauded as a genius. Now, in this, this is the reverse. This elementary school teacher, Carteresco was one as well, decided to read the poem The Fall to these distinguished people, and it was a disaster. So he decided to stay an elementary school teacher. So already this book is a kind of what if Carteresco did not become a writer. So that's the first thing. Now, the second thing this book does is it uses the solenoid in many ways. A solenoid is a kind of electrical conduit, but also in mathematical terms and now i am terrible at maths but i had again those videos that i mentioned helped me put a lot of things in perspective a solenoid is a kind of mobius strip like thing you know it's it's an infinite loop and the book is structured like that so what happens is let's say you'll get some characters who are mentioned and then maybe 50 60 pages later the event or those characters pop up again. And it's like that. It's constantly cyclical. So you start from point A and he goes to point B and then point C and point D like that constantly. So it's, this book is an infinite loop in itself. Now, what are these observations about? Oh, they're about anything. Sometimes they're, but they all have meaning. So there's a corporeal aspect and corporeal as a, as a part of the body. In fact, it starts out with the main character finding lice and then goes on to dirt he finds in his navel and then goes on to teeth and then keeps on going on like this flesh the body the body is mentioned a lot juices blood it, it's there's a lot of that but also to counteract that lots of passages in the book as well go into a dream territory so the author describes his dream he describes a metaphysical world called the fourth dimension. The fourth dimension is when you put, it's, again, it's another mathematical term. It's not really another country, like something like that, like a dimension, you know, another world. It's more a mathematical, so I'm repeating myself. Let's say you have three dimension, then you have fourth dimension. A fourth dimension is a three-dimensional entity in another 
three-dimensional entity, like say like a tesseract, or a Rubik's cube because that consists of lots of 3D cubes all grabbed up at the one. And in fact, that's what starts this meditation on the fourth dimension. So, so you've got reality and you've got the fourth dimension. Now, what is the link between these two? There is one. It is the book, The Gadfly. There, there's um, by, and the name escapes me completely. I'm very sorry about that. The surname is Volnich, though. So Volnich, Volnich is the gadfly, brings out the an emotional response in the reader, because he read it in the narrator, because he read it when he was very young and he started crying. And yet, this author's connection is with scientists who proposed the fourth dimension. She was close, Volnich was close to the creator of the Tesseract, and her father was Edward Bull, the creator of Boolean logic, which is what we use for uh, searching in Google. So that's the link. But there's more to it than that. Some of the chapters are anecdotes about his staff, which kind of represent culture in Bucharest, because this is translated, um, Mircea Catrescu is Romanian. So it talks about the, and the book takes place in, the, in 1981. So it talks about the politics of Bucharest through these various characters that he teaches with. There's one especially good anecdote involving a tooth and a stolen, a stolen a watch. Uh, th that's brilliant, actually. See, it's seven minutes. I'm, I'm always like this. This is a part of me. You know, these people have three hour videos and I can only, you know, I'm, I've always been like that brief and everything I do. So you've got, uh, to recap, you've got reality and you've got the fourth dimension, which is linked by the gadfly. And then you've got commentary on Bucharest. It's a political novel, but sometimes there's some flights of fancy as well. This is when, um, the author discovers that there's a solenoid under his bed. There's also sections on gender because his mother used to dress him up as a girl when he was young and he kept the pigtails. He keeps all his body silly things like his teeth and his belly button dirt in a jar or a matchbox. And it also talks about ethics. There is one section where a teacher asks him, would you save your most precious material or would you save a child? And the narrator keeps on saying, I will save a child. I will save a child. And that is actually put to test in the apocalyptic, and I do mean apocalyptic, ending. But I won't spoil that. Even though, you know, in a book like this, plot points are irrelevant. It's really more the, the concepts behind it. But it's an ethical situation. I think I covered, I mean, in this short eight minute video, I'm kind of laughing because I'm managing to do it in eight minutes. I, I want to at least stretch it up to 10 maybe. So um, that's, those are the points I can think of at the moment. It's an extremely readable book. There are dense passages, but it's not like unreadable or boring or even into pinch and territory. It doesn't go there. You just have to focus a little bit. But the rest, let's say the anecdotes and the things about the body are there. I, I mean, I like the fact that, that um, sicknesses and things like that actually really change his life destiny. For example, there's tuberculosis, and this affects his childhood, but not just the sickness, his destiny. We find out he has a fear of dentists, and then finally we find out why. You see how the book works? Like that. We we get hints, and then we get the reveal, and then we get more hints, and then the reveal, and then the reveal is then deepened even more as you proceed. So this, this is absolutely marvelous. It did change my way of thinking about life. There are quite a few philosophies on existence. I won't go into them because I don't want to sound too negative, but there are some some sentences which really struck me. I said, yeah, I never thought of life like that. I never thought of myself like that. 
it just puts them up like that. It gives you food for thought. So yeah, is this book a masterpiece? Definitely. Should you read it? Definitely. A 10 minute video isn't going to do anything justice. My blog review won't do it justice. You just, just read the damn thing, that's all. Okay. Mercia Cateresco, Solenoid, translated by Sean Carter, published by Deep Vellum. This is a future classic.